Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, welcome to, I don't know what number of an episode it is, but no matter what it is, it feels hot, it feels good, it feels absolutely amazing to show up and be present with you. How was your weekend? Let's have a cup of coffee together, right? So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa. And over 22 years ago, I transformed and healed within. <laughs> yes, you may call, uh, what is transformed and healed within? Well, allow me to say, that over 25 years ago, I was in uh, in the field of law, wanting to be an attorney. I was uh, thriving at a law firm, working as an assistant to an attorney, as a paralegal. And lo and behold, I had some pains. And after checking with my OBGYN, we found out that I had... Um, I developed my third ovarian cyst and I needed to have surgery. I went back to the law firm. The HR director asked me what happened and I shared with her what's going on. And I was distraught. I was crying. Um, and she referred me to an acupuncturist. I'm sure you've heard about this. But allow me to say that on the second session with the acupuncturist, he gave me a, an article to read about the powers of the mind, the subconscious, and the powers of hypnotherapy. And I knew of a hypnotherapist very close to my city. And I called her and I started my sessions with a few days. And in less than six sessions, I found the culprit, the reason of why my body was developing the ovarian cysts. And I believe that I healed myself through the techniques, through the therapy that we did, through tapping into the subconscious mind. And what I didn't realize is healed within. Now, when I went back to the gynecologist a week before the surgery and when they did the ultrasound, they could not detect it. He said, hogwash, there is no such thing. The body must have burst it or the cyst must have burst and you must have released it. And I said, no, this is exactly what I did. Now, is this something for everyone? Well, I like to call it, it is not a cure, but it sure is one of the most powerful tools and techniques it is scientific of how hypnosis and tapping into the subconscious mind for you it can benefit you it can benefit your body so there is a direct correlation between our mind what happens in our environment what happens in our psyche what happens in our dna and our body and then our emotions come and you know they entice it they add it they they just stimulate it either for the good or for the bad so last night hello my linda have a blessed day you too my dear hello christiana um thank you for being present so last night on clubhouse i do have a club and in my room we had over 130 people and we were talking about habits and behaviors and where do we go from being a social doing something socially to creating this habit and doing things habitually and into where does that habitual doing something over and over tilt into addiction so last night it was profound we usually have our room for 90 minutes and it was almost over two hours and we had to stop it and every monday night at 8 p.m pacific standard time you can come if you are on clubhouse join us at 8 p.m so here's my question to you 
what is it that you do socially? What habits do you have that you do over and over every single day? And it's like a habitual thing. Uh, every day you wake up, you do something habitually. I come to the office, I make coffee. Um, the time doesn't matter when I get to the office. Uh, here's another thing I do habitually. When I come, there's a stray cat. I make sure that while I'm making my coffee, I go and feed the stray cat with his food and water every single day. And there was a time that even I felt bad that I wasn't taking care of that cat and weekends I would come and make sure that the food is filled with water and food. Been feeding this cat that I hardly even see, but I know he comes once in a while, every single day, I don't know what time, but has his food. So here's that habitual thing. Is it an addiction? And if we want to talk about the habits that we have, and why am I talking about it? Because hypnosis and doing the work, tapping into the subconscious, we know that, I know I have helped so many clients stop smoking, uh, stop chewing um, their nails and cuticles, uh, doing this, it's a habit, it's a habitual thing. Sometimes we do it without understanding. They can be sitting and doing this, twiddling, twiddling the thumb. Uh, you know, some people just tap. Others do other things with their hands. Um, it's nervous reactions. Um, OCD can also be corrected through hypnosis. So hypnosis is known for stop smoking, weight loss, insomnia, helping with anxiety, and definitely weight. Why? Because all of these, everything we do habitually, there is an emotional connection to our behavior. We do something, it feels good or has a good result, and we keep doing it over and over. So in a way, when we think about a habit, it can be summed up into doing something that it's consistent and it could be a variety of things and yet we do it every single day. Every single day you wake up, you go to the toilet and then uh, right before you want to get your coffee or something, maybe you even brush your teeth before you leave, you shower, you brush your teeth before shower, you shower and then brush your teeth. So those are all systematic things that you do day in, day out, where you put your keys before you walk out where you put your purse. Those are habits. You come in and you do the same thing over and over. And then it creates this pattern that you walk in expecting the same routine to be in place. When something goes off or gets off the routine, breaks your pattern, here's where it affects. There is an emotional disturbance so it's not so much the pattern you get upset, but it's that emotional connection to the pattern. It's like you just disrupted my pattern. So if we have a habit, and I know I am, uh, I do the same thing that when I focus on writing an email, and if that very moment someone comes in and asks me a question, I'm like, uh, although I'm a fantastic in multitasking, I'm focusing on the words because words are so important to me and powerful. So as I am writing the email, if I am right in the middle, there's two things that it's possible. It is possible. I must stop in the middle of my thoughts. Hopefully I won't lose track of my thought or I say, um, and pay attention to the person who's asking me a question, or I continue and say, come back. 
This way, emotionally, I am not disturbed. And the pattern, my behavior, what I am working on continues with good results. I had a client who came in to stop smoking. And this is, oh my God, uh, she's been gone to maybe about seven, eight years ago. All these years, she knew that I help with stop smoking. As a matter of fact, I have a book called Stomp on Smoking because most of us, no matter how many times, maybe you are one of them, that you wanted to quit doing something and you realize that no matter how many times you quit, you start it again and somehow you just can't quit. You've been trained not to be a quitter. It's been instilled in you that quitters are just quitters. And there is a negative connotation towards quitters. But when you want to do something, when you want to break a habit, when you want to stomp or stop a behavior or a habit, then it becomes a choice. It is the choice connected with the emotions because, you know, uh, even weight loss, when some people say, I can't lose the weight, I've done it so many times and yet I gain it all back and they do everything to lose the weight and then they can't stand uh, when they gain the weight back. So here is what happens. Loss is a very negative and a very sad thing, just like quitting. It is an emotion. It is a word that it's, uh, it's demeaning. It is uh, low energy, does not motivate. It goes against moving forward, right? So when you want to do anything, I want to ask you, Next time, by all means, choose, plan to create a new discipline, a new habit. To form a new habit, you need to recondition not only your mind, but the emotion connected to that. Because when you want to do something, my question comes to, why do you want to drop the weight? Why do you want to shed the weight? Why do you want, right? And you say, I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to feel sexier. I want to feel good in my own skin. And I want my clothes that I just want to buy new clothes or the clothes that have had size, let's say six or eight. I want to fit in them and not be tight. Now, that in itself is a motivation instead of saying, because I don't like it, it's going to be healthier for me. Any other excuse, knowing that you already know the health ramifications, you already knew everything else. And in that, the feeling becomes so good that your body says, yes, Yes, let's do this. The emotion connected to your new habit is more important. So here's the fine line between the habit and the addiction. Uh, the, addi the addiction <laughs> is um, when we define it, it's uh, people will make sacrifices just to have that one thing that they need to feel good. As a habit, if I don't have my coffee at 10 o'clock, I can have it at 11 o'clock. It's not a need. The coffee is not calling me. I need you. You need me. It's just a habit. It's just a pattern, right? So when we think about it, I want to know if you think 
and you sit back <laughs> I was doing this as I was saying it when you sit back and think about it how many times did you say the word I'm addicted to sugar I'm addicted to this or even said the word without thinking are you really addicted to it or is this a behavior that if you modify it and shift it and put a different emotion to it that you can modify it you know when we tap into our subconscious mind where it's the platform to everything that's where everything the magic happens because your subconscious mind also accepts it it's not only the affirmations so addiction is where the need of what because every single thing allow me to say every socially doing something socially everything habitually everything addictively is the feel good made you feel good the first time and you want to repeat that again it felt good the second time third time and then you start continuing but there are certain things that feels good but you no longer like it and that is the difference you may not like and for those who are addicted to sugar addicted to alcohol addicted to drugs is different and some people say even cigarettes are more potent to leave a cigarette than um, addiction to drugs shift the emotion to whatever it is and then we modify yes and there is also a chemical imbalance that happens in the mind or end in the body that the body starts craving it but we also know that going through a withdrawal it's the emotional connection of I don't have what I need because that made me feel good and we go seeking seeking and people who are addicted to cigarettes they will leave in the middle of the morning or in the middle of night to go and buy that pack and that pack has no power over them they are the ones who go it but they say I can't be without it so shifting that from the core and the emotional connection to it plus the chemical withdrawal and doing the physicality neural science of that is where the shift happens so when the distinction is choice uh, it is realizing that when we are talking about this the client that I was talking about she used to smoke two and a half cigarettes a day a day and she knew about hypnosis and me helping so many clients but she liked the cigarette she liked the feeling of it she liked having the pack with her she liked everything about smoking but when she was diagnosed with throat cancer and the doctor said there is no way you can have the radiation while you're smoking and you must quit smoking she made a call she said it's time let's do this so they gave her seven months to live the oncologist had given her between seven to eight months that's what they had uh, estimated because she was far off stage three you know the first session we did oh, we dug in we went so deep to understanding where it started why she started what was her connections to smoking why did she feel that she wanted the smoking and everything was about 
smoking. As a matter of fact, in my book, Stomp on Smoking, we talk about where it came, when did you start, why did you start, uh, what did you feel when you smoked, why did you pick it up, everything. And when you don't have it, how you feel. So it literally is talking about the emotions. First session, second session, four days later, she comes back. From two and a half packs down to five. Significant in four days. And she had never stopped or quit smoking before. She thought that there was no way she could. Second session, she comes back. And we do the session, deeper work. Third session, she comes back. A week later. And she was going to go and have the radiation start. Probably a few days or a week later than that. So in the midst of a week and a half, I saw her three times. On the third session, she had not had one cigarette in that whole week. She was amazed. She thought this was magic. So what exactly happens during hypnosis? You go into this beautiful altered state of focused, not from the outside, because you hear everything. You hear my voice. You hear everything. It's like a meditation, but instead of going outwards, you go deep within. And it's just like an internal, what I like to call it, internal exploration of you. Internal exploration of how you feel, how you think, what you want. And sometimes even tapping to your inner child. And for the first time, acknowledging everything. And with that started the entire process. You know what? Here's the result that was beautiful. She finished her radiation and started going out more, started dancing, traveling, going, doing more things with friends, living life to the fullest. Not that she wasn't before, but she gave it all to herself. And instead of brooding and wasting her money, and she kept the money that she used to spend on two and a half packs a day, that's about 25 to $30 a day nowadays. Just think about it, $30 a day, and then times 30 days, that's approximately $900 a month. Hmm. What can you do with $900 a month extra? And this is only for the cigarette. And I'm sure the ones who are addicted to other things that they spend their money on and then not feel good about it and go into this destructive loop of, ooh, I did it again. I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, you know? There is no way I can leave this. Oh, it feels bad. I feel bad for doing it. I let myself down. I let my family down. I let... Guess what? All that is nothing but self-destructive, self-depleting, low energy. So here's my thing. Don't you want to feel good? Don't you want to feel healthier? She lived four extra years where she had no hope over seven to eight months. She lived the best. She gave it all to herself. Whereas before she used to do so much for others and sit and do nothing for herself except just brute and exist in her words. I'm here to serve others. She started serving herself as much, not only her, but as much. So is self, being selfish bad? No, 
means you start acknowledging, caring, and valuing yourself. You become a bit selfish. Then instead of doing everything for others, you also account you and remember that you do matter. So, would you make a perfect kitty mommy? Oh, well, thank you so much. Hi, Sita John. How are you? So, today's message is life. You know, life takes us to hmm, unexpected places. We all have a habit. We all are doing things that are habitual. And some people say, I can't break it. I can't do it. The word I can't is low energy and means I feel helpless. What if there was help? What if I say I can help you? And if I can't, I will find the means, the ways that we might be able to. But it's up to you to say, I'm willing to give it my best. And that best ought to be good enough. Not perfect, just good enough. That if you are doing something over and over, that today is no longer benefiting you it is becoming a hassle it's become depleting you it is a source of negativity between you your relationships your loved ones it stinks or makes you angry makes you behave in ways that it's not appreciative or you yourself feel you're out of control it's time for you to say, I matter. Because you do. Start valuing yourself and appreciating yourself. So if you want to start it, by all means, all you have to do is text the word HEAL, H-E-A-L, to 818-221-2797. And we can get on a complimentary um, complimentary consultation call. Let's see what we can do together because possibilities can become probabilities. You can do it today. You can do it tomorrow. You can do it this very moment. Your choice. Isn't it about time for you to start feeling good, happier, feeling more productive, and feel good about yourself? Your body needs you. Your body has been housing you, shielding you, and protecting you all this time. And you know what? You can. You can. That's it. The word, I can. I can't, if you cross the apostrophe T out, it means I can. So to end, I have a beautiful poem and it says life life is an opportunity benefit from it life is beauty admire it life is bliss taste it life is a dream realize it life is a challenge meet it life is a duty completed life is a game play life is a promise let's fulfill it life is sorrow you can overcome it life is a struggle accept it life is a tragedy for some it's about to confront it Life is an adventure. Oh, dare it. Life is luck. Make it. Life is too precious. Stop destroying it. Life is life. It's time for us to love it. 
So today, today's message was, you can. You can be at doing something socially. You can be aware of your habits. You want to change a habit? Call me. It's better to feel good than anxious. It's better to be healthier than negative. It is always better to feel better inside. And when you feel good, when you feel happy, you say the same thing, you do the same thing. For those who are looking up to you, watching you, and not only that, but you become a source of motivation or even a surprise for those who thought you can't. Let's surprise them. So today, I thank you for being here. The best way to experience hypnosis is to realize you go in and out of hypnosis every single day. But with me, you do it knowingly. My name is Lisa. I am here every single week. Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesday, and I will see you next week. Until then, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.